Hi, and welcome to Level Up, the series where we show you how to solve problems with Google Cloud Platform hands-on. Today I'll demonstrate a pattern from Fernando, one of our solution architects based out of Brazil. Fernando's written an easy-to-follow guide to reducing Kubernetes engine costs by changing your autoscaler parameters using Kubernetes cron jobs. While many applications have traffic patterns that are well handled by simple Kubernetes autoscaling configurations, in this tutorial we'll focus on scenarios with sharp, well-understood traffic changes. Think of times when you know in advance that a new scaling pattern would be effective, like we should scale more slowly after midnight, or we should get ready for a burst of traffic after our ad campaign goes live. Okay, so let's have a look at the pieces involved in this architecture. First, we'll run an application in GKE using a deployment. To manage how many replicas it runs, we'll create a horizontal pod autoscaler. We'll set up a custom metric in cloud monitoring that this horizontal pod autoscaler reads to adjust its scaling parameters. Finally, we'll deploy Kubernetes cron jobs to change the custom metric and therefore the scaling parameters when we know we need more or fewer application pods at the ready. I'll start off with this empty project in which I've already enabled the products we'll be using in this demo. Now in Cloud Shell, I'll clone the tutorial Git repository. First things first, I'll create a GKE cluster with node autoscaling turned on, allowing it to run up to 10 E2 standard 2 nodes. Let's have a look at the HPA example.yaml file. Here you can see a typical configuration to scale a PHP application based on its CPU utilization. It's set to a minimum of 10 replicas and a maximum of 20. Let's add this resource to the Kubernetes cluster and wait for it to finish starting up. 10 replicas is great if we're expecting a respectable amount of traffic in the short term, but let's set it up so we can adjust the minimum number of replicas according to a schedule we define. We'll start by installing the cloud monitoring adapter for custom metrics into our GKE cluster. Next, let's build the provided example container image, which can update the value of our custom metric. Looking at the scheduled autoscale example.yaml file, we can see what the cron jobs look like. The scale up cron job, which runs in the last 10 minutes of each hour, sends a value of 10 to the custom metric. The scale down cron job, which runs the rest of the hour, sets the custom metric to 1. Obviously, this is an unusual scaling pattern, it's just a facilitated demo, but you can easily use this kind of cron job to change the number of application pod replicas according to your own needs. So, how do we wire this metric up to our horizontal pod autoscaler? We'll need to change the autoscaler definition a bit. Let me apply this change to the GKE cluster first, and then we'll have a look at the HPA example.yaml file while the cluster is adjusting. Here we can see that there are now two metrics the autoscaler looks at. The built-in way of evaluating CPU utilization that we had already defined, and a new external metric, which is based on our cloud monitoring custom metric value. One important thing to notice is that when you have multiple metrics like this, the autoscaler calculates a proposed replica count for each metric, and then chooses the metric that returns the highest value. This means that even if our custom metric only suggests one replica, the autoscaler can still spin up additional pods to handle user load if it sees an increase in CPU utilization. Okay, back in the UI, we can see that our application has scaled down to one replica and two nodes in the GKE cluster. That's because it's 32 minutes past the hour while I'm recording this demo, meaning the scaled down cron job has exported a value of one to our custom metric. With no user load to drive up CPU utilization, this custom metric value is the one the autoscaler is using to determine the number of replicas. Now let's test with some load. Included in the tutorial is a load generator script. Let's have a look. This script makes requests to your service every few milliseconds until you delete the load generator deployment. The sleep command simulates different load distributions at different times of day, amping up the rate through the afternoon and evening, then tapering off at night. To visualize the effects of load generation and our autoscaling policies, we'll make a monitoring dashboard and we'll call it Scheduled Autoscaler Dashboard. Once it's ready, we can see the scheduled metric. That shows the number of application pods requested by our cron jobs. We can also see the CPU utilization metric, and then there's a nice graph that puts everything together. There's not much to see here right now, other than this scale down event. That was when we pushed the changes to the horizontal pod autoscaler a moment ago, bringing the minimum number of replicas down to one from the 10 that we started with. All right, a few minutes later and it's after 11.50. Our scale up cron job is run, setting the custom metric to 10, and we're seeing the results in our dashboard as Kubernetes works to spin up a minimum of 10 replicas. If we were to let this run for a full day, we'd see diagrams like these. Here you can see our scheduled changes taking place, scaling down on the hour and up at 50 past. Here you can see that our load generator script ramped up, 
generating more simulated user traffic after 12 noon, peaking in the evening. Notice how this load brought up the CPU utilization of our application pods, which caused the horizontal pod autoscaler to scale out more than one replica, since our autoscaler is looking at both our custom metric and the CPU use, and making decisions based on which is higher. This makes for a nice, flexible system that responds automatically to user load, and also to our defined scaling schedule. So, now you've seen how to use Kubernetes cron jobs with cloud monitoring custom metrics to adjust your autoscaling parameters on a schedule. If you're interested in trying this for yourself, head over to the written reference guide. It includes much more detail, links to the official documentation, and even has a nifty explanation of how to set up email notifications for when the autoscaler isn't working properly. And that's all for this episode of Level Up, with special thanks to Fernando for sharing his hard work with us. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe so you can keep up with the latest video releases. If you have questions or ideas for more topics, leave us a comment. Thanks, and see you next time.